Hey everybody, this is Brian from Big Lake Little Boat. And today I'm going to show you how to rig up your pole to jig for lake trout. So I normally go out of the south end of Lake Michigan uh, in October, November and jig lake trout. The pole that I use is a normal casting rod, medium action, six foot to six foot six. I use 10 pound fluorocarbon. And I also set the drag that if you pull it pretty good, it comes out. Because these fish are normally over 8 to 12 to 15 pounds. And uh, keep them hooked up. And to not break off, you need a loose drag. So that's the rod, 6 foot 6, medium action. And I like using bay casting reels. And there's a few reasons why I like to use them. The first reason is I'm right-handed. I like to reel right-handed. Um, and it's automatically on the right side. Secondly, it fits nice and comfortable in my hand. And I'm out there for two, three, four, five hours at a time. And I don't want the fatigue of, you know, holding a rod, uh, you know, the other way. Um... Uh, messing around with the spin caster. I like the comfortability of a bait casting reel in my hand the way it feels. Also, I'll only have to, I only have to push one button to release the line. And if you're using a spinning reel, you'd have to move your bail, drop it down, flip it back, reel up. I, it's a simple button push and a simple click. That's why I like to use casting reels for this. And you know, you can set your casting reel so it doesn't backlash, you know, as you release the line. Just adjust it, adjust your break, and you can keep it from um, spooling out if you're not used to using a bait caster when you're going out. So that's the, that's the setup. A six foot six rod, medium action with the bait casting reel with 10 pound fluorocarbon. Secondly, the rig itself, I use a barrel swivel with the same 10 pound fluorocarbon leader down to a snap swivel. And the main reason I do that is number one for line twist. Secondly, I have this leader on here because this line will get frayed. So you have to constantly, you know, every 15, 20 minutes, there's a lot, lots of rocks, lots of boulders down there, huge limestone boulders, and you don't want to get the fray in the line, hook up with the fish, and then it snap. Well, the other thing you may be wondering why I'm using a snap and using a barrel swivel up here rather than just using a swivel set up down here. I like the snap because you have that much flexibility. Okay, and your swivel will be a little bit tighter won't have as much play. So as I'm as it's dropping down and I'm stopping and I'm flipping it, it's able to move around pretty f freely with that snap. So I put this barrel swivel out of the way so it's lighter as well. You don't want all that weight right here. So you want as much movement and bouncing of that jig um, as you can. And that's what's going to attract them. So. The basic principle is you take it, you know, you get off the rocks, you're in 30 feet of water, 20 feet of water, 40 feet of water, you just let this thing go to the bottom, I reel up, maybe foot off the bottom, and then I just take large sweeps, just like this. And sometimes I'll just, you know, when I sweep it down, I'll keep it down, you know, flip it lightly. I like to, instead of just flipping it and letting it fall, I like to actually feel it, you know, I let it go down gradually. That way, if I feel it, if, if a fish hits, I'll feel it going down. Instead of just a free fall, the fish hits it, and then I go down, is there a fish or not? Oh yeah, there's a fish, and you might miss the, you might miss the, uh, the hook set. I've only done this, this is my second year uh, doing this. So, from my understanding, lake trout come in to the Chicago riprap, they come into the Michigan riprap, 
Um, I, I think, you know, as soon as the water temps come down in the fall, the lake trout move into spawn, and then they basically stay there all winter and feed on goby, feed on the alewives, whatever bait might be around. Um, so they're there all winter from my understanding and early spring. I haven't fished for them early spring. I typically fish for them through the fall and, um, and then it gets ice and then the boats in, in, in the garage for the winter. Um, but from my understanding and from what I've seen, they come in all along the lake shore of Lake Michigan. Wherever there's riprap, wherever there's rocks, any type of structure near shore, um, you could hook up with some lake trout. So the next thing I wanted to show you guys it are the different jigging spoons, different baits, lures to use. So these... These baits right here can be good some days. These are called blade baits. I typically get, what I do is I go to the store and find the cheapest ones I can because you lose them. You know, um, you get down between those rocks and they get snagged um, or you, you don't, you're not checking your line good enough and they break off. So... I get the cheapest ones I can. They all have that same vibration. Sometimes lake trout are attracted to that vibration. So I normally keep the stock hooks on these because there are, there are two hooks. Okay, those are blade baits. The second thing I use are these jigging spoons. And you can see there's various different sizes. There's various different colors. Um, these particular jigging spoons, I like, I, I buy them cheap, obviously, because if they break off, but I, what I do do is I change out the stock hooks and I'll change them one to two sizes bigger. As you can see, it's a pretty sizable hook for that. And I've changed them all out. So I go cheap on the spoon itself. And then I and I spend the money and put a real nice, good, solid, decent hook on there. And I typically go with Gamagatsu size two on these larger jigging spoons. I've used the um, the Shank RB, and I've also used the uh, extra wide gap, the EWG. And in my opinion, for my I think you get better hook sets with the extra wide gap than you do with just your normal treble hook with the uh, the shank RB. So, anyways, that's that's been my experience. So you can see the various different sizes. Um, this particular one, you know, I, I just found some cheap ones on Amazon. These are 40 grammers, which I believe is a little over an ounce. These are probably 30 grammers, probably right at an ounce. These are 30 gram jigging spoons. Um, I don't, I, you know, they come with these extra hooks up here. I, I normally don't have the hook set here. I, the hook set's normally here. So you can go into your sporting shops, your local bait shops, find these cheap jigging spoons and, um, you know change out the hooks so the uh, the the snap swivels that I use or the snap locks that I use in the bottom you know uh, as they connect to the spoons or the jigging spoons I use a number two as you can see number twos vary in sizes from one brand of manufacturer to another but I'm I'd, I'd rather have this one. I like this one. I have these for backup. I use these two. And then the barrel swivel that I use um, is this one. And I, you know, I like less intrusive hardware. So I, I typically go with the small ones. That's a size 10. Um, I also got these. You know, these were on sale someplace. Um, but uh, these are my favorite. These are the baits that I use to jig lake trout on the southern end of Lake Michigan. So what I've got for you guys now, um, I, I did a solo trip. I caught three lake trout this day. 
Uh, but the first lake trout I missed, the GoPro wasn't on, so I missed it. But I did get the last two. Without further ado, here's a video of me fishing solo for lake trout out of Portage, Indiana. Today is November the 20th, 2021, and I'm fishing solo today. All right, I'll see you when we get out there. Oh, crap! 
Buckets, Michigan buckets, and at every break he would send them out there to repair the turf just to make the point. This field wasn't, wasn't easy to play on. All right, the clock starts to wind here. 40 seconds to play in the half. First and 10 at the 31. Marty back. Marty throws to the near sideline, and that pass is out of bounds. Sanusi Kane was defending on Stefan Robinson Jr. He's a transfer from Kansas. Came in leading the team in receptions with 40, but that ball was thrown well out of bounds and stops the clock with 36 seconds left. Purdue, Purdue's getting a pretty good uh, rush with just the four down linemen, but you may see them do a blitz here because those defensive linemen are getting pretty tired. Second down and 10 for the Cats. They're at the Purdue 31, trailing 13 nothing here late in the first half. Marty again surveys the defense, claps his hands, gets the snap. Rolling out to his right. He almost slipped down in the pocket. Now he throws the ball complete to Robinson. And Robinson is sandwiched down at about the 27-yard line. And now Northwestern takes a timeout. Kieran Douglas was on the stop. That was about a five-yard pickup. And it stops the clock with 27 seconds to play here before halftime. And Marty almost went to the turf again. Yeah, it was very, very close. But it just shows you just how bad that turf is. That's a five-yard pickup. And it'll bring up a third down and five. Northwestern today 0 for 4 on third downs. For one on fourth down, and I think Marty is uh, trying to make sure that his leg is okay as he runs back and forth as they come out of the huddle there. That's uh, that's that's not fun to play on that kind of turf. It's not fun for the linemen either. Well, the Boilermakers are looking for the other 45, so that's basically the demilitarized zone, and they do have people standing down there. But he gets uh, against the wind with each other, and then the other team goes from the 45 to the five the other way. So far, it looks like both teams have behaved here in the first half. Yeah, it's, it's a hard-fought football game, and, and Northwestern's got a lot of pride. They, they've got a fiery coach who gets the most out of his kids, and it's, it's going to be a battle. But Purdue, if they can stop them here and go at halftime, shutting them out in the first half, I like our chances in the second half. The new CK stays in there. He's guarding Berkeley Holman on the short side of the field on a third down and five at the 26-yard line. Marty claps his hands, and they run an inside handoff to Hall. We do still on his feet. He's inside the 15, still on his feet inside the 10, down to about the 7-yard line. So it was a good day. Got uh, three late trout, had another two on. The one, 116, I'm calling it quits.